Today we're going to cover more news about recent major software releases that happened recently in addition to big company acquisitions that personally surprised me and I'm sure you will find this interesting. We're going to start with the release of Marmoset Toolbag 4.03. A new update has brought several improvements, additions and features that were highly requested by users and some of these most significant improvements include real-time denoising is accelerated for users with RTX graphic cards, new high quality options for CPU denoising, sprite sheet materials that allows users to paint with random textures, resource locator for relinking missing assets in addition to easier importing and many many other updates and new features. Next is Epic Games acquiring Sketchfab, an acquisition that is taking place concerning the big companies Epic Games and Sketchfab, which will immediately improve many things for customers from both companies in a better way. For example, a lower percentage will be shared with sellers now, and the Sketchfab Plus tier has become free, giving users the ability to upload more files at a larger size without having to pay. Also, as you might know, Sketchfab is a web-based service that helps designers discover, edit, buy and sell 3D content with a rich library of 4 million assets. They have a technology that is integrated across every major 3D creation tool and publishing platform and compatible with major browsers and operating systems on both desktop and mobile. By joining forces now, Epic and Sketchfab will work on making 3D, AR and VR content more attainable and grow the artist and designer's ecosystem, which is crucial for the future. Apart from that, while collaborating closely with Unreal Engine team, Sketchfab will go on as an independently branded service. Also we have the release of Moto 15.1. Its release has been announced recently by the Foundry. It came with multiple new features that offer better workflow and user experience. The biggest improvement is with no doubt the new customizable gesture based approach to controlling tool properties and channels, in addition to curve booleans which aims to enhance 2D design creation and will be next used in generating complex geometry with the help of a massive array of context aware tools. Procedural modeling also had its share of these improvements through the deferred and paused evaluation. Furthermore, you can now take advantage of the math quick cam to navigate through scenes in the standard render window. Furthermore, this new update has support for Python 3 and Qt5. Next is the release of Corona 7 for 3ds Max. The seventh version of this render engine has been released for 3ds Max and it is running. Several improvements touch this update in different parts to give users better results along with an easier and faster workflow. Starting from the new physical material, compatible with other software offering map metalness, roughness and glossiness modes, all while supporting clear coat and sheen, next to 35 built-in physical material presets. The previously clear sky has been updated with the RPG clear sky model with easier and faster aerial perspective rendering. Furthermore, the 2.5D displacement has been improved as well, along with updating the built-in library with superior metals, masonry and wood. Also, there will be a live webinar on Wednesday, August 18th to discuss new features in the render engine both for 3ds Max and Cinema 4D. In recent news as well, Unity acquired Speedtree. IDV Interactive Data Visualization, the makers of Speedtree suite of vegetation modeling and environment creation products used for architecture, games, visual effects and real-time simulations was acquired by Unity. Unity has always depended on Speedtree as a key part of its ecosystem and by acquiring it, it will become more integrated with additional improvements on the Unity portfolio to ease the workflow of adding organic elements on any projects for designers, architects and artists. From this moment on, creators are allowed to use all the Speedtree subdivisions such as Speedtree Portfolio, Speedtree Modeler, Speedtree Engine, Speedtree Game SDK and Speedtree Library to create personal artistic visions using these amazing procedural hand modeling tools. The merging of these two companies will change nothing for customers on both sides, but deeper integration is supposed to take place in the future as long-term benefits for users, which is being studied for the next upcoming releases. Next we have Redshift Render Engine switching to rent-to-only licensing. 
In recent years, we have witnessed companies changing their subscription policies to rental licensing for several reasons. Here is Redshift joining the club, which is expected because now it is part of the bigger company, which is Maxon. Of course, there will be a few changes with this step, which will take place by the end of August. New users are invited to open a new MyMaxon account, while previous Redshift accounts will automatically be transferred to the new MyMaxon system. For those who already have both my Maxon and Redshift accounts, it is highly recommended to use the same email to guarantee the connection of all their licenses before the end of August. The my Maxon account, however, will give users access to the entire ecosystem by connecting all licenses, learning resources, payment and invoice information to a single login associated with the user email address. And they will be able to access all their stuff anywhere with the ability to transfer them between computers. With more acquisition news, Artlist acquires software company FX Home. Founded in 2016, Artlist, a bootstrapped music licensing company, has worked very hard since to deliver more than 820,000 digital assets. In the spring of 2019, they launched the stock footage site Artgrid, which includes a huge catalog of high-quality sound effects. They have also acquired Motion Airy, a marketplace for digital assets by the end of 2020. And now, only six months later, Artlist is getting into the software development world to accelerate another step towards evolving as a one-stop shop solution for the next generation of content creators by offering them both professional editing tools in VFX and image editing software next to its enormous catalog of high-quality creative assets. Next, we have Amazon's Lumberyard game engine is now being open source. Amazon has announced that Lumberyard is now a freeware cross-platform game engine. And if you don't know, this game engine was initially licensed from Crytek. And now it is open source under the Apache 2.0 license. In July 2021, Amazon and the Linux Foundation announced that it would be replaced by a new open source game engine called Open3D Engine and it will be managed by a new Open3D Foundation run by the Linux Foundation. The new engine is considered a new one, even though it is reportedly partially based on Lumberyard, but with many parts rewritten. Next, we have Sketchbook leaving Autodesk to continue the development under a new independent company. After talking about companies joining forces, we have now another type of news here, which is about Sketchbook. It has chosen to continue its growth as a solo player, and Autodesk has announced is a new independent entity totally focused on the app, its users, and its future. They declared on their official website that the first update after this huge step will be within a week and will only concern the updated branding and legal requirements of the transfer. It will not have new features though. They added, even if they are not going for the subscription style, the app will be now a paid one to use the income for further development in the future so they can go on providing the cool stuff that they offer because they already have roadmap of updates planned, many of which are based on requests from Sketchbook users next to some new ideas, of course, because innovation is absolutely necessary. When it comes to the updates, they detailed very clearly for all the types of users the changes that will come along to witness after this step. So if you already have your sketchbook purchase, I recommend you take a look at their website to see if your subscription can be updated or not. I hope you found this news interesting and refreshing. If you have something in mind, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.